Hi guys, Tony here. So we're gonna do a quick video walkthrough of how to configure the telemetry on your spectrum transmitter after you have done the appropriate setup within the Brain software. It's actually quite simple with Spectrum. Uh, it only takes a couple of moments, but there are a couple of things that you need to be aware of. First, go to the Spectrum site and verify that whatever model of transmitter you have is running the latest firmware. This is a DX9. Uh, the latest firmware for it is 1.11. All right, so we're going to click into the main screen function list and scroll down to telemetry. When you open this up, you'll see there's a choice for auto config. Simply click auto config. The software will then communicate with your model, your powered model, and it will bring in all of the different things into the list that it can show you. You can see about five or six things that have popped into the list now. Now, the alarms for each one of these are all defaulted to inhibited. You don't have to have an alarm. You will still see the different data points on the transmitter screen, but if you want to set an alarm, you just go into the particular function. For example, flight pack MAH here, the one that everybody wants for their flights. If I open this up, you can see I can set the alarms over here and the choices when you open this up will be your tones, vibes, uh, voice vibes. So set that to whatever you would like. Uh, now you're gonna have to also do a little bit of work before you can set the capacity in here. Uh, there can be an error. There's likely going to be an error, either positive or negative, for what the system says you use versus what you actually put back into the batteries. So do a couple of timed flights first. Compare the value on the transmitter from the telemetry to what you put back into your battery. Uh, and then in the software, in the brain software, there is the ability to put a percentage error, either negative or positive, so that the system is properly calibrated. And then you can come in here and set your, uh, your telemetry values. Uh, now, something to be aware of too, both in RPM and ESC. When you open these up, it's going to ask you to configure the number of poles and motor poles and gear ratio. Do not do that here. Uh, that math is being taken care of on the brain side on page 12 within the governor setup where you set your poles and your gearing ratio properly there. For spectrum users, you want your ratio to be 10 and your poles will stay inhibited. You're gonna do this both on the RPM and on the ESC tab because this information is asked twice. If you put your proper gear ratio in, the data will be completely wrong that you see on the transmitter side. All right, so that's basically it. But one thing to, to know is receiver voltage. It shows in the screen here at all times, but the little drone receiver that we're using is not capable of sending that data back to the DX9, so it will always show as zero volts. However, there is some sort of a workaround here. If you want to know what your BEC or your, uh, let's say you're running a receiver pack, if you wanna know to make sure that you have proper power before you fly, you can do that. This information is coming from what's called the power box. If you open up the power box, you'll see V1 and V2. That's two different voltages. One is your main flight pack. The other is your receiver pack or your BEC. Now, unfortunately, it's not possible to set an alarm in the power box. So you will not get an alarm or you will not be able to set an alarm if, if something falls below a critical value. However, you can set this up to be called out on a switch. Uh, as a matter of fact, you can set any of the telemetry values to be called out on a switch. So I've got my power box on a switch so that I can flip the switch before I take off and, and hear the voltage of my flight pack and my receiver pack. Um, so I'll show you how to do that in a moment, but here is what it tells me when I flip the switch. Power box, battery one, 46.2 volts, zero milliamp hours, battery two, 7.7 7 volts. All right, so you could, I could instantly tell that uh, I, my flight pack is 46 volts and my receiver pack is 7.7. .7. .7. So I th that's about the best thing that you're going to be able to do here uh, with this, but I think the information is useful. Now the way that we do this, if we go back out of telemetry, the next thing down under telemetry in the function list is custom voice setup. Now I've got several switches with different voice things already in there, but it's easy to set a new one. So if you're starting from scratch or you wanna add some telemetry, go all the way down to add new sound event. 
I'm gonna pop back up because I'm using switch E. Once you go into the new sound event, you can choose which switch you would like to use and then you can choose what you want it to tell you as I'm about to show you. We're gonna use the uh, the setting I've already made here. So I'm using switch E, which is a three position switch. You can see that I've got position zero as power box, position one as power box. That's an error, we'll change that in just a moment. And position two, RPM. So let's open up the list. Now, you may not see everything you want here in the list that comes up. So scroll all the way to the top, go to select category, and then go into the telemetry list. Now, once you open the telemetry list, here are all the various things that can be shown for telemetry. So I had power box in there twice. Let's say, let's change one of them to ESC. Okay, so now I've got position zero ESC, position one power box, position two RPM, and so now I can hear those if I move my switch. RPM, no data. ESC, 46.2 volts, zero amps, 63 Fahrenheit. So you can see quite simple to set a switch to tell you whatever it is you want to know from the various telemetry settings that you have set in. All right, so that's about it. Hopefully that helps, and good luck, guys.